We got into we are on page of Gim. Where is you dollar? Up until this point, we were discussing the Indian from Kalim quite extensively. And now we are discussing the Indian of Oilis. In a nutshell, the way it is presented to us, the difference between Kalim and Oilis. Is in the is the principle that kalim are berichuk are distant from the source, oilos are connected to the source, and that makes a whole difference. And because of this difference, this is called oil and this is called kalim. Discussing Kaling, I, I'm, first let me say, I'd like to get, we started this morning, to identify and recognize what we mean by oil, and what is so significant by the oil. It's a different realm, different world from Kaling. What is the difference? And what is the significance of this difference? Hello? Yeah, hello. Yeah, hi, it's Yehuda. Hi, Yehuda. Okay, very good. Um, so, you were asking for what, what, is, what is the significance of or? Yeah, what is, what is the significance of the difference between Kalim and Oilis? I'm going to get, I'm going to get, that we should get a sense of what is so special, what is the Oilis? Oilis is in different realms. Oilis, all the limits that we apply, apply to Kalim don't apply to Oilis. What is so significant about Oilis? And we said, essentially, as we're going to see, that the primary difference is Oilis are connected to the source and Kalim are not. And what is so significant about that? So I just want to remind us. Um, yeah, go ahead. talking about the oilers, you're talking about the source of the oilers. You would, and the oilers have to be identified distinct. I mean, uh, what, what do you mean by oilers? They're connected to the source. And that makes them oilers, not Kaylee. But what do you mean by oilers? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that has to do with the symptom. It has to do with the symptom. So here, here's the thing that I would like that we should slowly get to sense to, to understand the meaning of oilers. Let's go back and remind ourselves a little bit about Kaling. We said in Kaling that there are different levels of Kaling. We said Kaling in Atsilus, this is Elokus Mamash. And then these Kaling become 
the mokir for for oiris of biya. You recall we said what what is what is biya? How is biya different than atzimus? So in now we show him. We, by the way, just want to point out, mishonim are extremely important. Not only to get the idea, but mishonim actually demonstrate and make you think from your own perspective, with your own, you sense the significance of this moshul, otherwise it's not a moshul. You, you sense that, yes, this is different than that. What happens many times, that we make, we make a distinction, and we say, hey, that's not significant. The truth is, it's very significant. The reason we think it's not significant is because it is an intellectual difference rather than a a factual difference, a Kayla difference. And we are usually thinking in terms of Kayla. An intellectual difference we don't see. Like we said, why does a person eat? He's hungry. No, he eats because he wants to live. What's the big difference? What what brings him to eat is he, he's hungry, you know. So oilies are very elusive. As we have you know, discussed in the past, and we shall still see, that's why that's why we need Katie. So one thing we saw by Katie is <coughs> again back to the motion of a Katie. Motion of a Katie is a table, a table as it is in the room, in the dining room and surrounded by chairs, surrounded by people who are sitting here. You don't even notice it's Matthias. It, you notice it's functionality, it's human functionality. It belongs there. It fits into the room like I said, a hand in the glove. Nothing extraneous about it. However, because it is, and it's capturing a human element, but it's a cave. And as a result of that, it is possible to take this table out of this room and put it in a place where it doesn't belong. Which means you can take it out of context. This is the big difference. Kaylee we can take out of context. Oilers you cannot take out of context. Oilers exist only in context. And what's so significant about that? Out of context, it means it is a standalone materials. To clarify this, I remind ourselves of what, what we discussed many times about light. You come into a room and you see everything that's in the room. If it's dark, you can also eventually identify every little less piece of the less uh, item in the room by touch. What's the difference? Between identifying it by touch in the dark, or identifying by in, in light and by sight in the light. The difference is in sight you see everything in context. It fits into the environment. You see it due to the environment. You don't see the physicality of the room, of the table. You see that it's, it's function, it's human functionality. That's what sight attracts and calls your attention to. Whereas touch is the other happen. Touch you can you start off with completely out of context. I feel a boy. Feel a leg, feel another leg. What is that about? I, I can only project. It's out of context. Now, let's let's now focus in and actually on an oil, an element of oil. We'll see the, <coughs> the 
Moshul that we gave this morning. For us to be able to relate to the concept of void, as to identify, we gave the motion like this. You have a cup on the table. The cup is a is a is a, is a keli. The table is a keli. Them coming together has to have been affected by some action. They don't belong together. They're two separate entities. Somebody has, has joined them and put them together for the purposes that he has in mind. Neither the cup nor the table are aware of what this purpose is, but they, they, just, they just put the understanding. So when we see a cup at the table, we know clearly without the possibility of doubt that someone put the cup in the table. But that is extraneous, so to speak, out of context. We don't see the significance of the cup on the table. We see simply the cup, the fact that the cup on the table, and someone else has put it, put it in there. We don't, we don't see it because the cup and the table belong together. They don't belong together. They're two separate entities. But somebody must have put one on top of the other. And then in contrast to that, I just want to call our attention to, to an oil element. Very simple oil element. What if the same scenario of a cup on the table, but instead of you finding a cup on the table, you see a human being putting the cup down next to him. To this. In this instance, when you see a person putting down the cup, you do not follow a certain logical process. Somebody must have put the cup on the table because the cup could not have gotten there by itself. Moreover, the cup, the cup was put here by the human being, not just because the cup would not have gotten there without the human interference. There's, a, there's a, different, a different element involved in this. The element is, this cup belongs here. It represents a complete, it doesn't represent a cup, not a table. It represents a human usage, human presence. So the fact that the cup is on the table and for sure it was put there is not due to the fact that that otherwise it could not have gotten there. But you look at the cup and you see directly that somebody put it. Because you see you see it from a Ruchinistiki perspective, you see it from a functionality perspective. From the meaning of this relationship rather than from the fact of it. In context, this would be in context. <clears throat> What's the meaning of the cup is on the table? What is the meaning of it? Not how did it get there. This meaning, this is this is called oil, because there's nothing physical about it. And the the, uh, the keli remains a keli, but now it's like it's within life. It's it's within meaning. Right. The keli is totally bottled to the oil. In other words. to answer your question directly. In this case, when we go for, and talk from a Kelly perspective or from the, from the oil, from the Kelly perspective, the cup is there first, the table is there first. The fact that they come together, that's a second, that's a second stage. Initially, they are independent, in, independent presences. From an oil perspective, the whole thing is connected at the same time. The whole thing is connected at the same time. It's created at the same time. Uh, right. Because there are no multiple things here. There's one thing. There is a, a human being using a cup. 
there's no table, there's no cup. I'm drinking water. As if, as if the kaling was subsumed into the light? Or well, there's no kaling to begin with, it's just the kaling? The, the, the kaling is, is a, a kaling exactly the way it is. It is, it is a facilitating the oil. But primarily what this is, is essentially the oil, not the kaling. Facilitating. Having said that, this was uh, the Mishonim are very important. This is like a simple thing, but if you think about it, you sense there's a difference in your knowledge that this cup was put down on the table by a human being by when you see it put down or when you see it away on the table. When you see it on the table, it is a secondary a logical deduction. Whereas when you see the person putting it down, you don't even see the cup on the table, you see what it stands for. Why did he put it there? Completely different phenomenon. This is the meaning of oil. Now, you would have based on, you know, let's connect this to what you said. Oil is connected to the mocker. There cannot be a human phenomenon without the human being. Cup in the table, full with water. If there's no human being here, it, it, it's a cup, of, a cup of water. Right. And in some ways, we're saying there cannot really be a, a human phenomenon without godly. The, the, the element. That's absolutely true. And um, what I want that we should understand it. He said oil, oil is, oil means it's exactly the same thing. You know, chesed, guru, the fellas, but it represents a totally different reality. On the Kaley level, it's a chesed, means an act of kindness. <laughs> On the oil element, chesed is, is the sense of, of um, relationship. what we said this morning. You can train a dog, a cat, to do all the actions of a cave, but you cannot get them to sense the oil. This is exclusively human. This is exclusively in the intellect. That's what intellect is. Intellect is a nishoma understanding. Understanding from a Nishoma perspective. We have many means by which we can, we can uh, identify it. Interesting, in Allah, in the Torah, the phenomenon of, of hunger for a human being is referred to not just by hunger, it's called herpas no'o. Herpes law. 
is the embarrassment of, of hunger. What's so embarrassing about being hungry? He doesn't have, he doesn't, can't afford food. So what's so embarrassing about that? And yet that's the way it's, it's referred to, herpes law. This is a direct allusion to the principle that a human being is a prince. It's not an animal it has to go and dig for his food, like the Hubble, the, the rat digging under the ground. When all the militia was created, everything was very clean. That's the way human beings are supposed to be. Really? We always speak, we have to watch, we have to recognize self-respect. And the meaning of self-respect is not respecting the self so that other people respect me. Self-respect means respecting that which the neighbors have made you. Respecting self-respect is respecting your creator. Because whenever she created a human being, this is a very special creature. This is a godly creature. Him lacking anything is help. In halacha, in halacha, in terms of halacha, the the minimum of, of um, tzedakah, of giving support to the poor. But halacha is the third assessment that if a person becomes impoverished and loses his status, his financial status, the says, you must not neglect him, you must give him and lend him his, in, his, in, in the, the funds that he needs to build himself back on, up. You to lend him enough they must say that he should, that he should supply all, he, all of his lack, everything that he is missing. And one says, what is he missing? He needs food, which means they must say They must say that means way beyond food. If he was used to live in a certain luxury estate, and now he fell from that condition, from that position, he is, he is in a state of help, of, of, of pain. Because he is not recognizing, he doesn't identify himself. He can't orient himself in this new, in this new environment. So a proper full help means that you give him a sense of the similar experience that he had when he was when he was on top of the horse. This is exclusively in the human environment arena. This element doesn't exist in the animal world at all. To a human being, if you give him a piece of bread, if you throw him a piece of bread, or you serve him on the plate, is a world of difference. Can you imagine, a, can you think of an animal to whom it will make a difference? I mean, really. This is oil. Oil means, again, we have a complete context. You're not just eating to, to fill your belly, not to be hungry. You're eating to, to, sell, to uh, uh, respond to the entire phenomenon of eating, to support life. This is why by oil we say, by 
oil, the oil is connected to its source. Without the source, there is no oil. Now we can <coughs> we can learn, learn inside and go through the whole thing. So I'm going inside again. What we did already, but now we will be able to discover it quickly. Okay. Three or four lines from the bottom of that section that begins with doubt. The line begins with Shahakav. Shahakav, Nagir, the Dobak being so important. The Kav is touching and is bound to, to Ain so bottom. The principle of oil coming from Ain so and all that, this we discussed briefly one of these days. And uh, I'll leave it at that at this moment. The agam, the hakav, nimshel gam ki al the yatzimtu. Although that the kaf too comes to the tzimtu, therefore it is not in soif. It does not represent it in soif. It comes to the tzimtu, and we explained what is tzimtu. Tzimtu means that, like like in, in the case of of the sun, we have the brightness of the sun. And then you lock it off. Brightness of the sun, this is fundamental brightness. The sun is there and, and the entire environment becomes becomes bright. Then you lock it off. And that's it seems. And then um, after it's blocked off, you you make an opening, like an opening to the window. There's a fundamental difference between between being in sunlight and, and open sunlight and becoming and getting sunlight through the window. Open sunlight, I'd like to show you open sunlight is not light at all. It is fundamental brightness. Essentially it's absence of darkness. It does not have a functional element of light. You cannot identify it as something that makes it possible for you to see out through the street. Because at that point, it's not that it makes it possible. It's not possible not to see. The whole inner you know, darkness doesn't exist. It doesn't, it doesn't create any situation, a new situation. Whereas if you have light come through the window, then this we, this we call a ray of light. It's a ray of light. It's a ray that even though here it's dark, you can see. And this ray makes it possible to see. And, 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 and to see particularly that area where the ray it comes in. That already has a functional definition. Light that makes it possible to illuminate. So the kav comes to the tzimtzum, which means it is oil. It is not the oil in soif, which means unbridled, un unlimited oil. I'm having trouble clarifying exactly. What about in the, the fact that it's now focused on, on one thing and not elsewhere? It makes it, in a sense, a functionality that light everyone doesn't have. To like pinpoint exactly what that is. Right. It is entirely similar to what we discussed about the cup and all that, but of course in a different I mean eventually we'll we'll see the similarity.
actually it's easier to see it in, in light rather than in the cup. Disgusting. When you say light, this is inferring a contrast. Light versus darkness. That's what light is. Whereas brightness, brightness is not versus darkness. The way the Torah calls it, day. Day is not versus darkness. In day, there is no darkness. You have to wait till light comes to save darkness. Whereas light is actually. <coughs> Displacing darkness. So this light has a definition. It, it, it illuminates. The daylight does not illuminate. Daylight eliminates darkness. It replaces darkness. It displaces. It replaces darkness. Against the backdrop of darkness. Against the backdrop of darkness, Tzimtzum. Okay, and, and this uh, it says Gamkem Ol Yedeya that somehow the Tzimtzum is enabling? No, 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 that, that's, that's not, in, in a certain sense it... Should rather be in spite of, not by means of, no? Ol Yedeya Tzimtzum is not by means of, Ol Yedeya Tzimtzum means through the Tzimtzum, and therefore it is not pure light. It goes through the tzimtzum. Can you say in, in spite of the tzimtzum? It's not, it's not in spite of, I mean... Tzimtzum is all about contraction and concealment, no? And then comes this light, even though... Uh, no? It goes through the tzimtzum. It's not in spite of, in spite of... Um, because the light is hiding with it means that it's not affected, it is affected by it. Um, it goes through the Tzimtzum and then there is a light on the other side, so to speak. It, it, it breaks through the Tzimtzum and, and, um, and um, ends up with, with, uh, with, a, you know, with, an, uh, with a functional light. That's what we said. The difference between the light before the Tzimtzum and after the Tzimtzum is and before the Tzimtzum, it's not a functional light. Before the after the Tzimtzum, it's a functional light. Okay. It's a, a light that is an identity. This is why he's asking. He's saying that the carb is connected to the source, but it goes through the Tzimtzum. In a certain way, it is true. true. For that to say, also, when you say that the tension facilitates, because since we're talking about calf, the tension facilitates calf. Calf means a, a ray of light. We call more coin, but still. And I am sure who me who ate in some sort of thing. Where are we up? Where are we? Where are we? Page of Gimel. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm confused. Yeah, I'm so close. Uh-huh. Okay. I'm so close. Can you? Can you read and see the Agam, the Agam, the Nusha, the Agam, and 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 the Agam,
is drawn also through the tzimtzum. Because prior to that, we said that the cup is connected to the source. Through the tzimtzum. Huh? Through the tzimtzum. Yeah, through the tzimtzum. By the tzimtzum. In other words, to say that the cup is not affected, cup is direct emanation from the source, it's not. It's connected to it, but it goes to the tzimtzum. So it's not purely the, the representation of the source. Of the hidden source. It goes to the tzimtzum. And here is where the big challenge is. And like we should try to understand this. This Mikomo. Mikomo came yet still. Yes, the cab goes through the chimps. And this is why it's a cab. It's a it's a ray rather than open light. Mikomo can still have a hamsha hosi who may oil is up to the chimps. It is drawn from the oil inside that precedes it. So what's the significant? Here is the is a question that we should all ask. What's the significant fact that it comes from the oil that we can't think, but it goes to the thing too? There is a disconnect here. Again, the disconnect is that he's saying it's it goes to the thing too. And remains the chimchum, and we said that the chimchum has a profound effect. Mm -hmm. So the fact that it is it is a reintroduction of the oil before from the poly chimchum, but it goes through the chimchum. So what is the significance of saying that it's a reintroduction of the oil with near chimchum? This is this is. A real subtle Indian, and uh, as always, we don't we don't skip. I'd like we should try to understand this. What does it mean that it's nimshach from the ocean if neyatzim? Only from the earth that's left after the tzimtzum. It's, there was a tzimtzum. Yeah. And, and, and the tzimtzum was with something the earth. All you have now is just that which the tzimtzum allows. But we're saying that it, it's nimshach from the earth that precedes the tzimtzum. Let me finish. Let me explain, to you, let me explain what, what the significance of this is. And we'll use common th things that we already discussed. Just even a moment ago, we said, there are two reasons that you may want to eat. You may eat. One, you're hungry. The other one, you want to live. Live. And we mentioned many times, this principle that you want to live is infinitely superior to the recognition, oh, I'm hungry. I'm hungry is a pure word of the experience. Want to live is an ashama recognition, is an intellectual recognition. That's when we made the point that this is quite impressive. That a guy in the in the Rebbe's court was able to sense, oh, I'm eating because I so I want to live. Does he really mean live though? That's what he said. And he understood to live at the rabbit's level, or understood to live on his own level, but still life, rather than hunger. Wasn't a negative, right? The 
the difference between eat because I'm hungry, this eat because I want to live, no matter whatever I want a life of life it is. I'm hungry is a worldly experience. Discomfort. I want to live life at any level. We don't understand what life is. Life is a gift from from someplace. But the Goya understood that certainly he did not. He doesn't have to understand it. None of us understand it. Mm-hmm. But you sense life is something which is which is intangible, something in, in, of a different a different uh, domain. This part, I'm hungry is represents gaming and I want to live represents poor. So despite the fact, here is the example of this, despite the fact that we're talking about living in the body. Living in the body which means in the world. A, a world like a worldly experience of life. Where hunger is possible. And it's conceivable, and not only conceivable, there, there is definitely that effect that what makes me aware that I better eat in, in, in order to secure my life, but I'm hungry. There is a worldly, a world level of, of trigger. I'm hungry, which is a, which is a bodily experience, and that makes you realize, hey, I better eat because that it, uh, that has rare ramifications. So that the initial element of life, which is completely beyond bodily experience still remains at the point where we have we have a bodily experience. That's an illustration of the idea. The last sentence again? The, 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 uh, the hunger remains at a bodily experience level? The hunger is a bodily experience. And the sense of life is beyond body, body experience. Okay, this, this came to illustrate um, carbon metaphor. This came to illustrate the principle that that despite the fact that, that there is a seem to me goes into the body, there is a sense of something which is which is beyond that, beyond that. The life of it. Okay. I mean, we, we could have thought it would, we could have thought it might be land up being different. That they could just yeah. be uh, life, hungry. life after something. We have made the concept very mental. The animal does not eat because it's, it, it wants to live. So it lives just within that it, cover. It that wants to eat because it's hungry. <laughs> No so sense of life in the animal. Uh-huh. Only the human being, even a goy have it, also has that sense because he has it. Okay. Let uh, this is yes, uh, it's an appropriate way. It's a, it's a good step, first step to understand this in it. Say it on the ocean if they had seen We said before the difference between the oil and the oil and the oil that's after it as a result of the symptom, that the ghost of the symptom. I said oil and the symptom, this is an oil that is not light, it's not a ray of light, it's the essence of light. Because it, it, like in the case of the sun, you have the full sun. The sun does not give light, it gives brightness, it, it eliminates darkness. Is it, is it also the light of the first day? 
Right. So I do like that first day. But there is a difference between the light of the first day and the light of the sun. Yes, not from that. There is a difference. The difference is, basically is that the light of the first day could not relate to world, and this can relate to world. But there's a similar similarity. <coughs> now, the primary difference, the significant difference, that the Oish Lifnei Hatzimtzum and Oish Yachar Hatzimtzum, is that Oish Lifnei Hatzimtzum is not oil in contrast to darkness. Oish in the Tzimtzum is, as I said, is a ray, which means an oil in contrast to darkness. So what the Rebbe is saying is that the Kav is Nimshach from the oil of which Lipnei Tzimtzum, even though it comes from the Tzimtzum, now it's a ray, but it retains a certain element in it that really it is, it is a light in, in through and through, not light only in contrast to, to, to darkness. You, you, are you, do I have with me? There's one more notch in here. The, this point was that even though it's a ray, it, it retains that level of That's light it. before. Yes. Okay. In, what, in what respect does it retain it? This is what we mentioned only many times. One thing with light, say with sight, the experience of sight is that even though sight depends on a ray of light shining on an object, but when I see the object, I see the object automatically. I don't need to touch it to verify that it's there. An object can be a distance from me and it is as clear as if I were holding it in my hand. It's a physical object. And it doesn't need to be held to be touched. How is that? You still with me? How is that? How did it bring you such reality, physical reality, without, a, without verifying it physically? to this to this question. It's quite interesting. The answer to this question is <coughs> that light brings things to us the presence of this of the physical object not not from its physicality level, but from its source level. What does that mean? Like we said before, the oil. The oil tells you that this thing is not just there, but it should be there. It belongs there. Like we said before, light shows you things in context. It belongs here, so it's right. It is not just a physical, a physical um, imperative. It, it forces you to see it. And, 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 
correct. This has been just discussed before. If you enter a room and, there is, and the room is fully populated with furniture, you do not see this furniture as distinct from the room. Even though it's that would be distinct pieces. You see the furniture as decorating and and complementing the room. Complementing the room. It belongs to the room. It's nothing ex nothing external. Nothing extraneous. In other words, it shows you the object not from the point where it exists, but from the point of what is the reason that it exists. Where is it coming from? That's what light is. This is the meaning, and what we're talking about, that the oil hakav is from is from the oil shiliflei to. What's the oil shiliflei to? Oil shiliflei to means there's no darkness. What's oil shiliflei to? There's only the reality. A little bit. Well, there's only the reality. I mean, this is this is this is uh, this is either this is like seeing the world as it should be, rather than seeing the world as it is, or the bunch of kalim, or whatever the right. lower vision is. So that's that starts to sound like a sort of a tzaddik's view. It's a tzaddik view. And we all, every intelligent person has that view at some, at some level. Because intelligence at that level. And here by reality, the word reality here is showing on, is going with the way things are meant to be. Intellectual, way, intellectual reality. Right, which we, which we could say the way things are meant to be. The way things actually are. At In essence. other words, for example, you're not going to go through this table. Not because the table won't let you go through it, but because out of respect. You don't understand this table, it belongs there. Right. <laughs> but it's right. Okay. It's also saying that any thing you may come across in the world, you'll see right through it to why it's there. That's right. That's what intellect is. And intellect goes directly to what the Rama says at first being. Everything in the world has a has a, a first being reality representation on different levels, but it belongs there. Rama called it Amitis Himoti, the truth of his presence. There's an element of truth in everything that exists. And this is the reason that we as intellectual beings can relate to everything. We cannot constantly say, oh, what is this? What's this about? What's this about? It's quite obvious. We can relate to everything. I mean, there's a, there's a whole bunch of things that people consider unreal or um, trivial. Or those, those are ways of saying the things we come across that are outside the gate of our ability to understand what's going on. There is true there is nothing in the world that is totally extraneous. Reality, its place, its moment. Pretty unreal. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this is what's called Oishin Ifnei Atzimus. Oishin Ifnei Atzimus represents a God in reality. Not just a functional light, so you shouldn't shouldn't be in the dark. Despite that it's a tzimtzum, it still has that element. <coughs> okay, this will be it, I guess. What what Hashem? The mamish was a turbulent. Uh, Submarine trip, but we surfaced. Now we're stuck with aluminium. I, I sent out a message to the group. 